All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us in this uh, next webinar in our education series. Looks like we've got about 46 people online now. Uh, there was about 130 registrants, so I'm assuming in the next couple of minutes we're going to add a few more. Um, we'll go a little slow at first to let some people join. If you have any questions, uh, I just ask you to hold them until the end, and then you can type them at the uh, bottom left of your screen. There's a little chat window. I'll be able to see them there, and I'll read your question out loud, and then I'll read the answer out loud. Um, and you can also tweet your questions to Nogala Think um, after if you have any remaining questions, and be more than happy to answer them. Um, so my name is Tan Rosen, and I'll be hosting this session in uh, Austin Added. This session is being recorded, uh, so uh, in video and it will be available to you for download later. We will go through this quickly, so if you miss something, you can go back to our site at megalis.com under the education section and preview the video again. Uh, we will also make this presentation available to you for download shortly. Uh, please hold questions again, uh, uh, as I said, uh, until the, uh, the end, and we'll make sure they all get answered. The agenda will cover an introduction to the add-ins, including uh, what they are and how they are used. Um, we will discuss a simplified architecture. We'll also mention some risks that you should be aware of and when, uh, when using add-ins, uh, some of the basic navigation through the wizard. We'll also spend some time walking through the query wizard that goes against tables, the query wizard that goes against the application by doing your form function inquire, and we'll walk through the upload group. We will uh, also discuss some advanced tools you can use when uh, building complex add-ins, and finally we'll cover some troubleshooting. The purpose of the add-ins is really to integrate the Lawson S3 back office and the landmark applications and database with the uh, Microsoft uh, tools like Excel. Um, these programs can be used to extract or load batches of data. There are multiple add-ins programs included in the product, which uh, use several different Lawson APIs. Um, the focus in today's session will be the first three that you see on this slide, the Query Wizard Against Database, the Query Wizard Against the, the Application, and the Upload Wizard, uh, which also goes against the application. There are also two landmark wizards that have the same look and feel as the other added. However, the query syntax is different. For more information, you can see the Lawson add-ins user guide for landmark. It is important to note that the add-ins use Lawson security. They do not bypass Lawson security. The simplified way to look and think about um, the upload wizard architecture is looking at it is um, shown on this slide, uh, the user runs the upload and the loss of security ensures the user has the proper uh, authorization. The form logic validates the request and sends it to the database where the updates are made. And then the form returns a message to the user such as add complete continue. So similarly, for the query functionality, the user runs the add-ins query and the loss and Security ensures the user ID may access the tables, and then the database sends the data back through the server to the Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. Consider the upload wizard as just having add and push data through the form to the database. Note, however, that the business logic resides in the 4GL uh, side of the program, not in the portal forms. Uh, this means that any design studio customizations you might have in place will be ignored by added. However, any 4GL added that you may have um, will be ignored. And then you can think of the query wizard um, that, as a query that goes against the database directly. So it, it, it doesn't uh, follow any sort of uh, business logic uh, from within 4GL. So uh, as the documentation will tell you, there are several risks associated with using add-ins. So a best practice is to always uh, use add-ins, uh, especially the upload wizard, to go against your test system first. 
Um, the add-ins are designed to be used with Microsoft Office applications and, uh, and not as a part of an automated interface. However, they can be used in this way. It is best practice to use other tools for integration, such as the uh, loss and process automation um, with the WebSphere Transformation Extender. If your organization is running the same add-ins query every day or often, consider having it sent via a uh, smart notification instead uh, or have it appear in a dashboard. If you, uh, those are tools available to the LPI uh, application. Um, so the tool itself is actually quite simple. Uh, Navigation-wise, there's only uh, a few buttons for uh, that you're, you're already somewhat used to. There's the open and save buttons. There is uh, that third button there allows you to uh, look at the uh, the raw format of the query, which we'll take a look at later. And then there's, uh, the the fourth button allows you to set a different timeout for your queries. Some queries take a little longer, and sometimes the tool times out, so you might. Uh, you might consider increasing the time off for queries there. And there's quite a bit of help text available uh, to you um, that uh, you can view by clicking the question mark. The wizard allows users to click through the tabs across the top or use the next and previous buttons on the bottom. The wizard also allows users to skip tabs and, and, go, ba and go backwards. However, if you make changes in one of the previous tabs, it may clear out subsequent ones depending on what the change was. And in our presentation today, you'll notice we might skip a couple of these tabs, but they're tabs that are more or less self-explanatory. So in order to use add-ins, the user must have a security attribute called allow add-in access set to yes. And the um, ID, must have access to the correct table and the correct applications you want to do queries or upload the case. The add-ins are launched from within Microsoft Excel. When the add-ins are launched, then uh, the login window uh, is presented and you use the same um, server and username password you would normally use to log into the portal. This example shows the query wizard. Uh, once you log into the query wizard, you will need to choose whether you're doing a query against the database tables or against the application. Normally, you will do your queries against tables. Uh, however, uh, the application queries uh, are, are a great tool that we can use to build templates for our uploads, add-ins uploads, which we'll demonstrate later. So if you're confused by that now, you'll, you'll, you won't be later. It is always best not to op open more than one add-ins program at a time since uh, it can lock up Excel. The first wizard we'll go through is the uh, query wizard going against the database. Uh, and and I, I really want to point out here the items that you uh, may not obviously get. So, um, you know, before we started this presentation, we've done a, a survey and uh, it looks like about a third of the people that had originally signed up had never used add-in, and um, the, uh, the remainder had, and, and quite a few of them said that, uh, well, I did use it at some point, but it's been long enough that I don't quite remember. And at the current moment, we have 65 people attending, so it should be a pretty good representation. So we want to cover uh, some, of the, some of the more obvious items in there, uh, so bear with us. Um, you want to first decide on which field you want to inquire on. To use the fields in lots of forms is an easy starting place. For example, you can use the, the employee fields off of HR 11. And next, you will need to locate the tables that hold these fields, including the main table you use for your query. And finally, you'll build, save, and run your query. So let's go through some of that, some of what we just said. So first, deciding on which uh, field to inquire for the query, these are fields in the lots and forms, like the employee field sorry, uh, on the HR 11 form. So if you click on that, uh, you'll see the details for each field by looking at the technical text for the application or by using uh, the control shift O, the letter O. So control shift and the letter O together on the portal form will we'll show you that subtext that you see at the bottom of the screen there. 
So in this example, you notice that uh, the field is actually called EMP-employee. So that EMP, that three-letter abbreviation, is actually the um, table name. Uh, well, I'm sorry, this abbreviation for the table. We don't I, actually, at this point, we don't really know what table we're dealing with. And you also notice that it's a numeric uh, field with a size of nine. And since we notice that the uh, key fields on this screen are company and employee, it's likely that the EMP table that we've already determined here will be the um, main table for um, running the query. One caution is to watch out for derived fields since they're calculated on the fly and do not exist in the database. They're found most often in inquiry forms, such as uh, forms in the 40s and 50s range, like IC40. We now know the table abbreviation, EMP, and the fields we, fields we need to do our query on. So we, we're going to log into the S3 add-ins query wizard and choose the database table. So I, here I chose the database tables radio button. So before building our query, we need to know which table to use. So we know that the abbreviation is EMP. The field tab has a table prefix translation tool in the lower left corner. Most people don't notice this. Uh, type the table abbreviation and tab off the prefix field to see the table name. So if I type in EMP there and I tab off, it will tell me that it's the employee table. So now I know that the table I'm going to is actually called employee. Now that we know the table, we can click through the wizard beginning with the product line. So you select your product line. In this case, it will be test. Um, and that will give me a list of system codes with tables. Well, um, the, uh, the employee table is within the HR system code. So if I select that employee table, I'll see the field for the table on the right side. And now I can click the fields one by one and add them to the right side, or I can actually select all or select multiple at once. You can also bring fields over from related tables by clicking on the relation button, but we won't get into that here. This next uh, tab is kind of the most powerful tab. It's a criteria tab where most of your time is spent writing uh, add-ins queries, and there's a lot of options here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to choose an index, and you want to make sure you're using the appropriate index for the type of query that you're doing, because choosing the index is, is really kind of the, the uh, the main thing that that's your uh, that's your for better performance and and, and more relevant records. Uh, the system will not produce the expected results if the keys are followed by blanks. Okay, so this is one of the biggest gotchas. For example, I can't fill the first field in an index and the fourth field in the index, and I'll leave the middle two blank. Um, but the the workaround here, uh, so. In this example on the screen, I can't have company and employee filled in and then not have any process, flow, process level in the current. But what, what I can do instead of leaving a blank is I can put a range there or a set of values. So if you notice for department, I have 106, semicolon 107. So that says both of those uh, departments. And then the last trick is um, you can actually set a range by using a dash greater than um, uh, and so in this example, one dash greater than 1,000 means every employee that's numbered between one and 1,000 is included. So if you know the uh, value, uh, valid values in the key field, you can essentially skip that key field by putting in the uh, field range such as, you can just say AAAA through 99999 or something like that, or all zeros through all nine. Um, the uh, semicolon separates individual values, and the hyphen followed by a greater than sign will give you a range. So using these workarounds, you can essentially skip an index key. You can also use predefined conditions in the database to refine your results. Um, I, so in order to find out what those are, you can look at the technical text for that table using a tool like DDoc or just uh, talk to your 4GL programmer or your PBA. Um, the maximum number of primary records to return. So this is just the maximum number of records you want returned from your primary table selection. 
And so here's the most important, really, the, the biggest part of your criteria uh, selection is going to be in the selection criteria box at the bottom half of the screen. So the selection criteria tool is powerful in that several complex filters can be set up. It can filter on fields from related tables, but the criteria set here are usually the cause of slow queries and may even prevent it from working. As best, pra as best practice is to use the index and conditions as much as possible and limit the use of selection criteria. Um, but you're not, gonna, you're not going to do away with them because a lot of times they're very necessary. Um, also, be careful not to try to use derived fields in your select statements. In the select section, uh, fill out the criteria and hit the add uh, criteria button. Here, here the query was uh, set to filter all records returned where the zip code was equal to 43215. The field display sample data, that little checkbox, uh, that's useful to show you some sample data for, for the field that you've selected. Um, it's more useful uh, with things like dates, so you can kind of uh, try to see what the date format you're supposed to be using, and sometimes you just don't know what the field is, but keep in mind that could take a while if there's a lot of data in a field like that. Um, and the, fill, the checkbox for edit existing criteria will allow you to edit in the criteria that have already been added. This is available so that the criteria do not have to be deleted and re-added. Note that the selection criteria should be built with, those, with the base criteria first and your relation criteria second. And you may get, otherwise you might get unexpected results. Um, it might help to group criteria together um, to make the syntax, uh, to query syntax more clear. Group from, grouping criteria can be used to clarify when you have several and or statements as uh, shown in this next slide. Um, so here is a detailed example of how to build the select criteria using grouping. Uh, an example, we want to see all sales and account manager employees who are higher than in January of 2013. To do this, we enter four criteria. The first two are grouped together and the last two are grouped together. Without grouping it, uh, it could be read as all employees who are either account managers hired in January or, or else have a job code of sales. Read this way, it could return all employees um, with job code equal to sales. So to clarify the syntax, we group the top two together and the bottom two together. It is um, also possible to have nested parentheses, so if adding more criteria, we could group all four lines together, which would put parentheses at the beginning uh, of the first line and the second, uh, I'm sorry, and, and the end of the last line. The subtotals tab is used to put in breaks. Um, here the spreadsheet will break by job code. At the end of each break, the add-ins will provide the sum of the column salary by weekly rate that we've selected. Sort order is typically dedicated by the index you choose, uh, but you can change to the sort order. But keep in mind that could result in some performance loss as well. The spreadsheet fields are uh, optional. Optionally, be they can be optionally be set up to uh, be used with lots and drills. So you can select which uh, screen you want to uh, use as drills. If you set up drills, though, you must make sure that the add-ins output has the required keys that are necessary to do the drills. For example, on HR11, you want to make sure that your output has at least company and employee in order to be able to do that drill because the key fields for HR11 are those. So one thing to always make sure is to click the Save button, the Save icon, to save the query before you run it. Uh, that way, if the query fails, times out, or locks up, you can uh, close out and reopen it uh, where you left off to make corrections. Uh, if you don't save it, you'll have to start over. Queries can be saved and reused. Other users can use them, and if you have a newer version of add-ins, this is easier to do. 
Um, they are fairly portable. You can save one that was created in your test server, then change the product line to your uh, prod server and run it in prod. Um, click, uh, so on this screen, you, you basically save and click finish to run the query, and then um, the results are sent to, the, to your spreadsheet. So if you click that um, the query uh, button uh, at the top, so you, you can then view the actual raw query here. Here we see that uh, we use the data ERP servlet queried against the product line test. The files we're using, uh, the file we're using is the employee table. The uh, rest of the query is written in proper format to make the HTTP request. And, um, you can technically copy and paste this into a browser also to kind of get the same result. This screenshot is a part of the output for the query we did against the employee table. So it was a very simple query. And here is a screenshot of a query that uh, shows breaks, totals, and more grouping in the, in the spreadsheet. Um, and so this is the last slide we have for the query wizard against the database. The next two slides are, uh, again, using the query wizard, but this time to go against the application uh, instead of the table as we've been doing. We mentioned earlier the query wizard that does inquiries and that, that is uh, typically used to build an upload template. Similar uh, to the database query wizard, We'll walk through uh, the wizard again, choosing the form such as HR11 and fields um, you, uh, you want to return. In order to do the inquiry on a form, you need to you need uh, some key fields such as company and employee to do uh, query against HR11. Um, the rest is the same as Adam's query against the database, except for the criteria tab. This is much simpler in this case. The criteria tab, you just tie a value to each of the key or query uh, criteria. If you want to filter additional values, make sure to add those fields in the previous tab. So we've gone uh, into great detail on queries, and uh, much of the uh, process is similar in the next section covering add-ins upload wizards, so we'll focus on differences in their use. Again, uh, decide on the best form to use. Uh, there are often multiple versions of a form that, that will do similar things. Build a template to make it easier by using the query wizard application uh, radio button when you do the error function and load those into a spreadsheet. So by that I mean that previous query form that we just did, the spreadsheet, it creates a perfect template for your upload. Use that spreadsheet as a template, edit the values, add rows, and upload. So to begin, you launch the Excel, uh, in a launch Excel and choose the upload wizard and, and log in. At this point, you have decided on which form to use and you have uh, used add-ins query tool to inquire on the form. Next, browse to the form on the left pane and double click to see the columns appear on the, on the right side. Columns on the right only appear if you have data in the spreadsheet. Okay, so if you don't have your columns added in the spreadsheet, you have to add them first, otherwise they won't appear. So here you see um, the worksheet column A, uh, and you don't see anything else because we don't have uh, columns added. So we can go back and add those columns, and they'll appear here. So now you have to begin mapping the columns to the uh, fields on the, the, the columns in your spreadsheet to the fields on the form, and those are available through these dropdowns. And also please note that the, uh, there's a uh, data range uh, on the top here. We've set it from rows 1 through 10. Uh, actually, we would have set it from rows 2 through 10. That's kind of a uh, bad screenshot. But that, that basically tells you which rows on your spreadsheet you want to upload. On the Upload tab, the options on the left are uh, from the form functions, like Add, Change, and Delete. On the right, we have um, additional options. Um, you you want to uh, ignore pre-inquire status. This means um, the add-ins should not stop if the line gives a field is required error message. This is uh, this could allow you to add a line with blank in a required field, so it's best not to use it, um, except in very rare cases. 
Once you're ready, check the left column uh, check on uh, one or two lines and, and click the uh, upload. Messages appear at the right side of each row, uh, just as in portal, so you'll see things like add, complete, continue, and you'll know you're on the right track. So uh, on to some advanced tricks. Um, when uh, getting further into the technical tools and tricks, it helps to have uh, knowledge of XML. Uh, there's an excellent free tutorial on the w3schools.com site. Uh, Lawson provides the uh, Control-Alt-A uh, trick and the portal debug to help test and troubleshoot. We'll kind of take a look at those. So when you hit Control-Alt-A on the uh, portal screen, you'll get this uh, nice little display that gives you more uh, more information. And uh, so click in on Form Variables tab here. You see the path to the API that's used for the AX call and IDA calls. This is uh, uh, it, it's the, the server that it's using. Um, let's see, the, the name column uh, tab is quite nice because it tells you all the column numbers um, and, and the, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the field numbers. Um, the key collection tab shows just about everything you want to see, including the edits for uppercase and, and date fields. And another nice one is the Ags Return tab, shows all the data sent from the server. Um, note the message tag at the bottom in the XML output that shows inquiry complete. Really helpful one is the uh, Transaction XML tab. Uh, be careful with this one. Make sure you're doing it on your test servers, uh, since you can edit the transaction XML right on the page and uh, and you can run it. Uh, so this is a good way to debug um, uh, your your query. Some troubleshooting tips. Um, if you can't log in, uh, very likely there's either uh, your your security flag is not set up, or you may be using the wrong wrong URL. Uh, if you can't query a table, you got to check your security again, um, and um, or, or maybe your index value and conditions uh, are, or derived fields are, are, are an issue. If the query is taking too long, so this is kind of the, the biggest problem you, you might come across and more, more, most often, um, you got to check that the query is efficient. So you got to make sure you're using uh, the right indexes and. And try to limit your record to a, record returns to a, 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 a good number. So Adams returns them in batches of 1,000. So um, usually, you know, I, I try 10, 20, maybe a couple hundred, and then then I test my inquiry without limits to or you know whatever limits I need. Um, when you hit 10k, 10,000 records, you're going to see some other limitations um, that. Um, that are from a server side. There's workarounds uh, around them, but consider if you're hitting that many records, maybe this isn't the right tool for you to be using. If you have unexpected results, uh, check the uh, filter criteria and date format. Dates are often uh, TCYY MMDD without flashes, or sometimes they're MM slash DD slash TCYY with flashes. Uh, if the upload doesn't work, uh, check for HK or hidden key values. Uh, use Control Alt A to compare the query string in Portal with your add-ins query string. Um, there's some uh, KB articles here uh, if you still can't figure it out. So um, this concludes this presentation. Uh, we, we're, we're planning to have another one uh, uh, on uh, requisition approval on August 29th. So that's about a month and a few days from now. Um, so we hope that you'll join us on that one as well. Uh, you can sign up for it by going to gallus.com slash education a little bit later today. We will send you reminders. Uh, and uh, if you're on our email list, you'll get an email reminder to sign up for that um, uh, course as well. So we'll uh, move to uh, Q&A, and I am going to allow. Uh, let's see. Okay, so yeah, if you if you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, type them in the um, bottom left corner of the screen, and I will uh, read them out loud and answer you out loud. So uh, where is the technical text uh, for conditional definition? So there is 
um, the, the place that I go to most, if you have access to LID, uh, is a tool called DBDoc, uh, and that tool can return uh, all the uh, correct information um, for a table uh, as far as conditional uh, restrictions go. Um, then I believe the, uh, the actual uh, suite documentation, like for example in the HR suite, there are some um, there are help texts there also, uh, and I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure if they provide you the conditional format, uh, the condition model uh, definitions there. Uh, are there any preloaded upload files? Yes, there are uh, quite a few actually. Uh, I mean, the, the community has been uh, quite helpful in creating a lot of those, and um, uh, they're available. Um, and, and, and a lot of them are actually delivered um, to uh, lots, and I believe you can still download them from the support side. Um, if I find the link for that, I will go ahead and post it into the educational sec education section. There might be there might be um, instructions I can post uh, for you to download more. Okay, so let's see, I think I skipped your question here. Uh, what is recommended for OTM? Uh, okay, so OTM is one to many. Um, that, so for example, OTM is uh, a one to many relationship could be you have an employee table and you have dependents. So employee has a one to many relationship to the dependents. So you want to select the number of records that make sense for your query there. Uh, but I, I, I encourage you to pay a special attention to what that means because you could run a query that has, uh, for example, if you have a one to many relationship between accounts and transactions, you could be sitting there for a very long time for your query to come back, and it will likely time out every time. As far as uh, email and the presentation on the site, yes, they will be available on our site, and I will send everyone a link to exactly where they will be. Uh, you'll be able to download the presentation. You can also view this video again. Uh, this, this presentation is being recorded, and the video will be available on, on the site as well to view. No sign-ups necessary. You don't have to uh, do anything special. You can just uh, go there and, and, and watch and download it. This question reads, uh, when I tried to query for records with active lease plans for employee, I kept getting error of invalid date format. Go on Windows, and if you look in the database, it has 0101 uh, 1753 date, and how do I check for um, no end date? Um, that's a good question. I don't quite remember it off the top of my head. I don't quite remember if I use that actual. Um, so what you're seeing there, that 0101-1753, that is your actual database zero date. So that's uh, the date that's populated when there is no date. Um, I believe you may be able to say if the date is blank um, or, or actually set quite to this date, but I don't, I always have to, test it over again. But if I find the answer, I will post it into the same section uh, as to uh, as where you could download the presentation later. I'm sorry I don't have the answer for you readily. How can you pull all query records instead of a set number? If you don't put a uh, limitation on the number of records that are required, uh, returned, uh, I believe you get all of them. Uh, however, that's really not recommended because you, you very likely would have timeouts on, on, on large queries. Um, I don't see any new questions coming up. Uh, if you have any further questions, you can tweet, it at, uh, tweet them at us at that uh, Twitter address that's on your screen, and we'll be sure to uh, reply right away. Um, please join us on our next presentation, and um, if you have any suggestions for other courses you'd like to see, uh, we'd love to provide those to you, and uh, so uh, please go ahead and email us. Uh, you can email Kelly at Kelly at Nogales, Inc. I'm sorry, Kelly at Nogales, um, and uh, we'll put those in our rotation and, and uh, make sure we get them to you soon. Uh, really appreciate all your attendance and all your feedback that you had. Uh, 
and uh, for our last presentation, the previous one, by the way, the security presentation is still available on our site. In case you missed it, you can go back there and review it. Get some really great feedback there. Um, and if you have any comments, there's a, there's a comment section on the site. Please uh, use that to kind of give us feedback. Uh, it's the only way we're going to be able to improve this process. Um, I see one other question here. Uh, is there a detail help in the KB uh, for add-ins if someone's available? Uh, if someone available to help? So uh, there's there's quite a bit of help within the the actual tool. There is um, the, the the question mark uh, button there actually gives you quite a bit. On the knowledge base, there's quite several articles that address specific things. I don't I don't know all the ones that address is uh, in general, but. Uh, the add-ins themselves, they do have a document available uh, from uh, from uh, Infor Extreme. There is a document that's uh, basically the add-ins manual um, that is um, uh, that that's pretty comprehensive. It, it includes everything in this presentation, um, more or less. And and as I said earlier, to address this last question, the, the the PowerPoint is not going to be emailed, but it will be available on our website at megalis.com slash education.html, um, and there's a, there's a link on the site to the education section, but I will email everyone that attended with a, um, a link to it as well. Thank you, everyone, for attending. I uh, really appreciate the attendance, and uh, please be sure to give us your feedback.